colors, changing their shapes, changing how they look, like thorough, everything. They they change everything, and also they also change, um, maybe to draw themselves tattoos and to pierce their bodies. So I want to know in your faith in Islamic. Yes. Is okay. there? A word in Islamic way it says that the the body of a human being is a temple of God, or the body of a a, a believer it's a temple of God. Thank you very much. Uh, le let us say we are talking about tattoos, mm -hmm. piercing the bodies, or the way you wear. The we can also include. Things like plastic surgery mm -hmm, as well, or bleaching, mm -hmm. changing the the skin color of you know you, the of your body, and uh, altering that is called changing or altering the mm -hmm. creation of the Almighty God according mm -hmm. to Islam, mm -hmm. and that is actually much deeper. In today's world, you see. That there is quite a number of things you will have implants. Yes, people are having uh, surgeries. They're Se changing their skin. Yes, even their faces. You will find the nose. If I see my yeah. nose is fat I and like it's like this, this I, I don't go. like the shape of my nose. Mm -hmm. I can go for surgery for that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe my my cheeks are a little bit in mm -hmm. inside. I want them to come out and mm -hmm. to be you know chubby and. I, I do that. Yeah, mostly so, women, they also change their body shape. They yes. change their shape and their skin color. Sometimes you won't recognize the person. Mm -hmm. You wonder, is this the same person that I knew? Mm -hmm. Because they would have completely changed. changed. Mm -hmm. So what does my faith say about yeah. all these things? What does Quran say? The Quran prohibits us. Mm -hmm. from making any permanent changes on our bodies. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. is referred as to tempering with the creation of the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Now, if God has given me this nose, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how you view it, whether you like it or you don't like it, this is mine, which the Almighty God has given me. I must embrace it. I must love it. Okay, Imam, wait. Uh, I want you to be clear on the creation. You mentioned something about God created you with that nose, with those eyes, with that shape of the body, with that color. Since, uh, does Quran say that you were created by God? Yes. It's what Quran says? Yes. The Quran talks about okay. the creation. Mm -hmm. You know, when you open the 23rd chapter of the Quran, which is entitled Surah Al-Mu'minun, mm -hmm. it mentions in various verses the fact that the Almighty God is the one who created us. And it even tells us how we were created by the Almighty God. The various stages of the embryonic development of a fetus in the womb of the mother until the child is born, and again, the death of a human being and the resurrection that is going to okay. And there is a question that is asked that is it hard for the Almighty God mm. to bring us back into life after he had caused us to die? Or which one was more difficult? The first creation or the second creation after our death? So it is the Almighty God who created us in the beginning. It is him again who is going to resurrect us. Mm -hmm. So, the Almighty God is our creator. He created us in the way that we appear. And he chose that look that you have. Mm -hmm. Those features that you have on your body. Mm -hmm. They are given to you by the Almighty God. And he made you distinct mm -hmm. from others. Mm -hmm. And what is important for us is to embrace who we are and to love what we are. It is very unfortunate that we have allowed some other people to tell us what is beautiful and what is ugly. Mm -hmm. Today you have people who are full of shame just because of the way their bodies look like. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are big and they think that being big is problematic. You have to be thin and you have to be slender to look beautiful. Who told you being slim and slender is beautiful and being big and... 
mm. is not beautiful. Mm -hmm. That is why also they say beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. There are people who are going to appreciate you in the way that you are. Mm. And no matter how much you may change yourself, there are some people who are also not going to look at you as being beautiful, no matter how much you think that now I'm looking beautiful. Mm -hmm. There are some people who are still going to pass comments and like, he looked or she looked much better before whatever they did. So we need to embrace ourselves and be happy with what God has made us to be like. So mm -hmm. going on to change the creation of the Almighty God is prohibited. Mm. Okay. In other words, you are saying, God, I think you didn't make me properly. You mm -hmm. failed. Now let me show you how you should have made me. Okay. Now if you are God, how you, were you going to feel? <laughs> yeah, I will feel disrespected. Yes. Uh, that means maybe I created something which is not good. Yes. Okay, Imam, you said that it's prohibited to make permanent changes according to Quran. Yes. How about making... Temporary changes. Temporary changes. Like makeup, changing my hair color. Okay. There are certain things which are permissible and certain things that are conditionally permissible. Mm. And there are certain things or certain changes that are completely impermissible. Mm. Now, when you look at the changing the hair color, mm -hmm. in fact, changing the hair color according to Islam, there is nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Only that the color that we are prohibited to change our color, mm -hmm. our hair color into is black. We don't have to change your... Yeah, you can change the, 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 the color using other colors, but not black. Black is it, your original. It's stated yes. in Quran. So you don't in have to hadith. make your hair more black than it no, is. No, there is a difference between enhancing and uh -huh. changing the color. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay, um, you mentioned something about changing things permanently. Yes. In Quran, it's prohibited. I want to know, there are people who are born, uh, maybe let's say that they just uh, became, uh, they lived with disability, maybe recently, they are living with disability. I don't want to say disabled because there is no one who is disabled. Um, I, I want to uh, come up with, with a good word. Maybe I got an accident. Yes. I had to uh, to lose my legs. Yes. Or maybe... Then you have an artificial leg. Yes. There is nothing wrong in having an artificial leg. Okay. You are not changing anything. Uh -huh. The same goes with your teeth. Am I not adding something permanently? No, you are not. That's different. You said something about a gold teeth? The, the teeth, mm. not, not necessarily gold teeth. Mm. Sometimes you may get into a fight. Mm -hmm. Then you get a blow and it hits your mouth and teeth <laughs> fell out. <laughs> and now yeah. you can't bite properly and yeah, you go to yeah. the doctors and probably they put the implants. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you can't even smile properly and you think that I, I need to, mm. to bring out my sp smile as best as it Mm -hmm. as i can you mm -hmm. know so i need to fill up my this gap this void yeah, so, so you go to I the doctor nice mm -hmm. yes yes <laughs> because uh, have you ever noticed that when you have teeth missing in your mouth now mm -hmm. it becomes very difficult to smile mm -hmm. because you are opening another conversation while you are enjoying yourself people yeah. are now going to talk about your void especially new people but if you get used to the people they will get used to that mm -hmm. but that is a necessity, is a need. You are not changing anything. You had the teeth before and you lost them. Mm -hmm. So it's a replacement. Mm -hmm. It's like when a person doesn't see, cannot see and get some, some, glasses. some glasses to mm -hmm. see, mm -hmm. you, you are not changing anything. You mm -hmm. are just aiding whatever you already had. You had the eyes mm -hmm. and you are aiding yourself in order to function properly or better how, as a person. How about to add hips as a woman? Yeah, that now. Mm. That is not a necessity. What do you need the hips for? <laughs> now you are, it's just altering the is, shape of your body. Is, is the Quran, the book of faith in Islamic, clear about necessities? Necessities, yes. Okay. Because 
Islam, there is a golden principle in mm. Islam which mm. says that that necessity mm -hmm. knows no not. Mm -hmm. Even when it comes to fasting, we are mm. supposed to be fasting. We are still in the month of yes, fasting. Yes, and hopefully on, the, on Tuesday mm -hmm. or, or on, on Wednesday, uh, we will be celebrating. The 10th or the 11th we will be celebrating our Eid. Mm -hmm. So it, it is compulsory to fast. But mm -hmm. it, it, says, it says that the Quran states that if you are forced by necessity, mm -hmm. there is no harm upon you mm. that you don't fast and you will make up for the days after the month of Ramadan has passed. Mm -hmm. Which means that Islam is very cognizant. Mm -hmm. It recognizes the fact that sometimes there are situations that requires us mm -hmm. to do certain things that we are ordinarily not allowed to do. Mm -hmm. So it says in that situation, you are allowed to. For example, I'm starving i'm hungry mm -hmm. there is nothing to eat or drink mm -hmm. and the only drink that is there is a bottle of alcohol yeah <laughs> if it's either i drink alcohol or i die mm -hmm. to save my life because my life mm -hmm. is the most important thing yeah. that i have to look after mm -hmm. so i am allowed to, to drink, drink to survive now i don't now drink to enjoy yeah, i drink to survive. to survive same thing with any food that may be ordinarily yeah. impermissible or yeah. prohibited mm -hmm. if it is to do with saving my life yeah, yeah. i am allowed okay. Okay. but now when my life has been saved i'm no longer in danger i should not continue eating or drinking that so yeah. islam recognizes the issues of necessity yeah quran is quite transparent ne? yes yeah yes. okay the, 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 there was a point that I was uh, mentioning mm -hmm. when it came to the temporary mm -hmm. changes. Mm -hmm. When I said there are certain changes that are allowed, we mentioned mm -hmm. about the hair, I said yeah. it's allowed. Yes. And there are certain uh, certain things like, okay, there are certain creams that you can apply on yeah. your body. Yeah. They, they have no harm mm -hmm. that you can put on your look body nice. and you look nice or mm -hmm. maybe a little bit lighter or mm -hmm. shiny mm -hmm. or, you know, you, you are much that. enhanced. Mm. That is allowed. Mm -hmm. There is a statement that I made, made mention of to say that there are certain changes mm -hmm. that are conditionally allowed. Mm -hmm. The condition is as long as it does not cause any harm mm -hmm. on your body. Mm -hmm. For example, there are some skin lightening creams mm -hmm. that people use. Yes. But these creams are known, I cannot mention names. Yes, you cannot. They are known for their side effects and harms. Yes. I've seen people who at one point in time they were looking very light. They were dark. When we grew up knowing them, they were dark skinned. Mm. And all of a sudden we saw ah, so light. and so now is very light. Yes. Ah, so when did you become white or light skinned? <laughs> then all of a sudden, we saw a huge change. There yeah. were some blots and pimples that started mm. coming on their skins. Yeah. And now those started blotting and mm. they started having dark, yeah. dark yes, spots emerging yeah. and skin cancers. And mm -hmm. when you look at them today, they are now worse than what they were yeah, before they before. started using those creams. Mm -hmm. So the condition is whatever you are using, it must not have side, side effects. effects. It must not harm you. Okay. The Quran tells us that this is a quotation that answers our discussion for today, mm -hmm. especially tattoos. Mm -hmm. Do not draw with your own hands into destruction. Anything that you do with your own hands mm -hmm. that will harm you, that will destroy you, it is not allowed in Islam. Mm -hmm. So, when I looked at tattoos, mm -hmm. I was looking at uh, scientific researches. There are about 11 harms or side effects of tattoos. Now, I ask myself that why do people make tattoos on their skins? Just for fun. I want to have this picture or like I'm in, in love with this woman. Then I go and draw her picture on my skin and then for what to show my love for that person aren't there any other ways of showing love to this person without necessarily making those tattoos if something wrong happens while you are getting a tattoo and these needles that they are using go onto your veins it can 
cause a lot of problems. The ink that they use, it may have certain chemicals like merc mercury or oxide that if it ends up mixing with the blood, you may end up, end up having problems or you may end up having uh, cancers, you may end up having skin cancers, you may end up having some problems in your body. Did you know that they said that you are not allowed to donate blood about one week before, uh, after you had just had your tattoos on your on your no, body? I didn't know. So, which means that those things, foreign things that you are putting, those inks that you are putting in your bodies, they are not good. <laughs> so, Islam does not allow us to put foreign things that are not good for us, for no apparent reason, into our bodies, especially if that is going to cause harm to our bodies and you know just on a lighter note mm -hmm. there are some people who had it was a girlfriend and a boyfriend they loved each other so much mm -hmm. they had tattoos yes. of each other's names on their private parts <coughs> and even drew their faces mm -hmm. and unfortunately those people they separated mm -hmm. now this one had to go and get in fall in love with someone else, someone else or got married to someone else mm. and this one went and got married to someone else so just imagine now this woman has another man mm -hmm. and each time they become intimate or mm. they become naked in front of each other mm -hmm. that other spouse has mm -hmm. to see the name. the name of that ex old spouse of mm. that person mm. Mm. Every day I have to be reminded of your ex. Mm. How does it make me feel? Yeah. So there are certain things that we do out of the spur of the moment, the excitement of the moment. Mm -hmm. But they are going to have negative consequences in our future. So if you have, uh, this is my advice mm. to people mm -hmm. out there who may be tempted mm -hmm. to have tattoos. Mm. If, you may, if you are to have tattoos, mm -hmm. better have them as temporary tattoos because yeah. there are two types of tattoos yeah. there are temporary tattoos and permanent tattoos mm -hmm. the temporary tattoos in islam they are permitted yeah. they are like henna yes yeah. like henna when during weddings they draw mm -hmm. themselves or use mendy and they decorate mm -hmm. their hands and mm -hmm. all that with that uh, henna that that dye mm -hmm. after some time you can wash it off <laughs> and it can go mm -hmm. that's what we are allowed to do or to use but while we are giving that conditional permissibility of tattoo mm. we have to also emphasize the fact that the tattoo itself never mind about just tattoo in general mm -hmm. but the tattoo that you as an individual are about to make it must not be a shameless tattoo mm -hmm. or a tattoo that if you are to show it to someone mm -hmm. then that person will ask you that message. is Hey, what kind of tattoo state of this. mind were you in mm -hmm. when you made that tattoo? Mm -hmm. So let it be something that is sensible, mm -hmm. something that is reasonable, mm -hmm. and it is something that is all to say to beautify yourself for an occasion mm -hmm. that you can get rid of at any time in case you regret having Doing done that. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know of scholars, even mm -hmm. in, our, in our faith, in yes. Islam, mm -hmm. who embraced the Islam at a later age but they had already made tattoos all over mm -hmm. their bodies. Mm -hmm. and so what must happen if they are permanent? The, the Quran say, tells us, Islam tells us that Allah is not going to hold you responsible for mm -hmm. things that happened in the past. Mm -hmm. When you repent and you make a firm resolution to be a changed person, mm -hmm. God is not going to hold it against you. But you as an individual, mm -hmm. just imagine I am... A Maulana or I'm a Sheikh, I am mm. Imam, mm. I have tattoos on my body yeah. and I'm standing in front of people mm. and these people they know that these kind of tattoos are not allowed. People won't understand Yes, that. God has forgiven me. Mm. But every time I stand in front of people I feel shy of these you know, open things that I had done on my mm. body which everyone can see. Mm. So it is between me and the people my, my, my appearance now I'm not going to feel comfortable to appear in front of people. Mm -hmm. So we are to told that for whatever has happened in the past, God is going to forgive it as long as you ask God for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But for you now, when you know to go and do this, 
That mm. is not permissible. Mm. So, Imam, I'm coming uh, back with the issue of piercing and um, um, uh, the, the attire of a, of a believer. How should it look? Are we allowed to pierce in uh, Islamic and to, uh, to wear anything that you can feel comfortable with or there is a strictly attire that a, an Islamic